Bond the Oscar goes to? Bond. James Bond. Phone home. My dear, I don't give a damn. Take your sticky paws off me, you damn dirty ape. One morning, I shot an elephant in my pajamas. How he got in my pajamas, I don't know. My mother thanks you. My father thanks you. My sister thanks you. And I thank you. Turkish Delights. I don't even know what Turkish Delights are. I think it's like almond paste or something. Weird. It, it's something weird. It's, it's really good though. Yeah, I have someone on I have the post that keeps popping up on Tumblr is like I had Turkish delight recently. It was good, but not sell out your entire family to the White Queen. Good. <laughs> well, well, welcome to our friend Oscar. Uh, the Oscar. the amazing adventure to the Academy Awards, and we got a lot to talk about. Yep. Golden um, Globes happened. Golden Globes, the nominations, the, the surprises, the snubs. Yeah. Um, the Oscars made out of Legos because <laughs> screw you Oscars. Screw you Academy. But since this is a show about Oscar, we do need to talk about one little thing. Malcolm Moore was on Sesame Street. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going to pop some trash. <laughs> Only got seven bags in my trash can. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this happened a while ago because I... I've been seeing, like, a, just a gif of him hanging out with Oscar and just wearing that big coat. Yeah, it probably could, and they just released it on the internet. Okay. That, that's how I, I know the Sesame Street things now is because of the internet. Yeah. I totally wear that coat, though. That coat was <laughs> yeah. awesome. But, but yeah, I, like, so, was... someone, ah, I forget what someone said about it on Tumblr. They're like, that coat's ridiculous, and someone just put ad it underneath. But shit, it was 99 cents. <laughs> 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 so... Do you think it was better than the Kids Pop version? I love the Kids Pop version. <laughs> yeah. Kids Pop version is awesome. Nothing you do is going to make Brian. No, no other thrift shop parody is going to be better than Kids Pop and Brian. I just my favorite part of that, the part that just kills me every time I hear it, is uh, is that it's uh, no for real. Ask your grandpa, can I have his hand me downs? And then like four kids in unison going, "Thank you." <laughs> this part that just kills me every time. I just find weird that, like, they had to edit so much of that song to make it appropriate for children. Why would they do it anyway? Like, walk to the club, like, what up? I got a hit song. So, We're just so, hey, hey that's, that's the guy, the guy on the marquee. marquee. All right, well, let's let's take away back from Sesame Street. We we, we got to talk about the Golden Globes. Golden Globes. I didn't really pay attention. Neither did I. I forgot I it the, happened, and I a bunch of people were like, hey, this one. And I was like, wait, did the Oscars happen, and I forgot about it? And they're like, no, Golden Globes. Oh. I read the winners the next day because I had to get up at 3 in the morning to work. My boss gave me free pizza, so I missed the Oscars. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Golden Globes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't so. plan to miss the Oscars at all. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I saw was the opening, and they were talking about uh, Into the Woods and how uh, Bill Cosby um, sneaks stuff in the Sleeping Beauty's drink. Hmm. <laughs> I did like the line from uh, Tina Fey and uh, Amy Poehler. Yep. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, tonight we honor the best of television and the best of the movies North Korea was okay with. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, obviously Boyhood. Boyhood? One. Yep. And yeah, that's a good, that's uh, yeah that's gonna sweep everything important yeah. yeah and then the Grand Budapest Hotel that surprised me I would I would have bet serious money on Birdman a lot of people were I have a friend he watches both shows religiously I mean he posted his list and um, it was Birdman and it was his pick no I would have maybe it's just because Grand Budapest Hotel is like more definitively a comedy or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think also it's, I think Wes Anderson never really got his due. Oh, yeah. He's and I think this is, this is the movie, because this movie was, I think, a lot bigger than his previous movie. Well, this one had, like, a limited release, which was mm -hmm. why we had to drive, like, an hour to go see it. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, it uh, so that makes it... And then it did a wide release. Yeah, but it's yeah. starting off limited release and then going to wide release. That's like, that's like Oscar bait, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, but I it's mean, limited release, but it's pop got popular enough that we had to do a wide release, and then so then naturally everyone in the academy is gonna be like, and anyone that's gonna vote in Golden Globes is gonna be like, well now I have to see this. It came out in like 
yeah, January or February or something, yeah. and it's yeah up for an Oscar. That in and of itself is just. Mm-hmm. But I mean, when stunning. I meant when I meant um, bigger in size, I was talking about just the story in general. Yeah, y- your previous two movies were essentially about family. Yeah, here it's. I it, you got to go. Someone dies, and you find out this painting's worth a million dollars, and you you know. Everyone That's... wants this painting, and you find out the guy is actually the heir and to Adrian the fortune. Brody and Adrian Brody was awesome in it. I loved him in that. So, I mean, I, was... I'm sorry, Brian, but I would do Adrian Brody. Hmm. So would I. Adrian Brody three way. Hmm. No. Like if we met, if we met him, he's like, you guys are both beautiful. Would Would you be down for it? No, he's mine. <laughs> Please. You can watch if you want. I don't want to watch. I want to get in on that. Uh, but yeah, and just Ed, Ed Norton was in my two favorite movies this year. I realized that while watching yeah. Grand Budapest Hotel again. But that's not the only news that we have. The Oscars did post their best picture. Mm-hmm. Eight Ooh. nominees. We're not really going to go into it, but... Um, there were some surprises, upsets. I don't even uh, know the list. I haven't, I, I should have I only really paid this. attention to like four nominees. <laughs> I was um, like, okay. I should have prepared for this, check. but I, I Birdman, thought check. I had more cleaning to do than mm-hmm. I actually did. Well, I'll name off the list. American Sniper. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. expected. Yeah, yeah. war it's movies are win, always. But it's not going to but it's going to get nominated. Yeah. Uh, Birdman. Hell mm-hmm. yeah. Boyhood. Obviously. Yeah. The Grand Budapest Hotel. Hells yes. yeah. Imitation Game. Yeah. Salem. Salem. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Me neither. Um, we will. The Theory of Everything. And Whiplash. Whiplash. And a lot of people are very upset. <laughs> but, because they, they all said, you know, what's the point of having, making this like 10 pictures if you're not going to yeah. pick anything time. that's popular? <laughs> what did they want to happen? Did they want to put Guardians in there? Uh, yes. Actually, James Gunn was like, why wasn't Captain America Guardians nominated? It was the best picture yeah. of the year. <laughs> I, I like I liked both this, those movies. All of yeah. the superhero movies this year were like flawless. Well, maybe not flawless, but they were fantastic. And I had an amazing time watching those movies. And there's not a single superhero movie that's like up for any big category. Nominated. Here's here's my thing. Superhero movie. Oh yeah. <laughs> here's my thing. I think Guardians. I don't. I, I think it's a good picture. I don't think it's a fantastic movie everyone's talking about. I, I know love... you were really like grumpy about how people were gonna be like, oh, I'm super into Guardians of the Galaxy now because no, that's, of the movie. that was Chad. That was Chad. I knew it was one of you. It, it was that's Chad and Corey. It was you. No, I, I I was the one saying this is gonna make a lot of money. And everyone was looking at me like I was a crazy psycho. And then Chad and Corey were like, "No, everybody's gonna be like, oh, you only lo- I like the I like Guardians of the Galaxy. You only like it because the movie came out." Um, yeah, that's how I got into it. I'm not really a hipster about anything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm open. You to are. Anything. You are too. You are a mystery hipster. That's just because modern mystery TV shows are fucking atrocious that's what that's something a mystery hipster would say yeah but if someone came (laughs) up to me and said man i'm just getting into colombo i wouldn't be like well i was into colombo first yeah hey the only good mystery show out there is sherlock i mean that's it i mean what what do we have to go against sherlock elementary (laughs) no i'm holding out some hope for that show with the guy from the office i don't even know what it's called Mm -hmm. but it's Dwight from the office as a detective, so but that there, might be fun. There were two big s- surprises, or I can't say surprises, snubs, that really shocked me. Yeah. The Lego movie. Yeah. I, that was my pick to win. That, that was... Because <laughs> wasn't it like Lego stop motion? No, it was actually CGI. What? Yeah. It looked like it was all made out of Legos. Holy shit. Yep. They used, they used the Lego program. From the video game? From, um, for the sculptures used to make... Oh, video. okay, I see. That's what they oh. used for the program, and then they CGI'd it all. Oh my god, that's amazing! Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I, I think I think the one reason why it's snubbed, which I don't think it is the main reason, there were live-action parts. And 
it could be a possibility with a little bit too much live action. I think it was, yeah. my yeah. guess would be it's, the whole movie is essentially product placement. I mm. think it's, yeah. it is good entertainment, but it is still like, like your look at how great Legos like are. Like your you argument know? against Fox News w- yeah, the, being mm-hmm. like, it's, a, it's anti-big business was, it's a two hour toy commercial that you pay mm-hmm. to see. Yeah. So I mean, I'm sure a lot of I mean, I'm sure a lot of like Academy people probably thought that too. Yeah, that yeah that's actually what um, I believe James Gunn once said too. Is like I don't understand why the Lego Movie wasn't out. Right. He goes, he says I think the main reason because people saw it as the Lego Movie and they didn't watch it and they go, the Lego Movie. Well, let's just pick Disney. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get the know. I get the feeling because it's not Disney, because I mean, let's face it, the mo- in movies in the past that have been like kids family movies that have gotten nominated for best picture were like breathtaking disney films Mm -hmm. so i think that since disney has nothing to do with this it's and it doesn't have like a really dramatic storyline is it dreamworks it's warner brothers okay it's not dreamworks either and they get nominated all the time yeah it's like it doesn't have that history of Mm -hmm. wonderful animated movies like i can understand beauty and the beast being the first animated movie for best picture because it was like visually stunning it had a gripping story the characters were interesting big bold musical numbers only one french accent in the entire movie that took place in france (laughs) and angela lansbury angela lansbury as a teapot (laughs) singing tail singing the wonderful song with brilliant visuals and a romantic story stockholm that, syndrome eh, stockholm syndrome everyone says that and i disagree <laughs> no i i'm i go with brian on that one it's because everyone says it and i'm the only one here that's like maybe it's not stockholm syndrome it's true love i don't know it could be it's a disney love so it's okay yeah it's disney love so it's not an issue <laughs> But then again, there are also people like, well, Ariel just traded, Ariel got rid of, her, got legs in a vagina because she saw a man. Like, well, no. she was 16 years old. And she wanted to be a human and go on land before there. she met this guy. This was just what Ursula did to get the ball rolling to get her to be like, yeah, I'm going to trade my fins and go on land. I'm going to hang out with the dude. So, no, she wanted that the whole time. And this just helped Ursula with her evil plan. Well, for me, the metaphor there that's really upsetting is that to get the man of your dreams, you have to surrender your voice. <laughs> yeah, that's upsetting. That body language. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I can of imagine that a lot of the people on the uh, who I, I I would imagine the majority of people voting for best animated film didn't watch any of the animated films mm-hmm. and just will go down the list and be like Disney, Pixar. So, like, after the Oscars last year, that came out online. Like, a bunch of people were like, I didn't see any of the nominees for Best Anime Picture, but I did see Frozen, or so I just voted for whatever. Mm -hmm. Which, I'm glad Frozen won, but, I mean, that's kind of, that's not how I wanted it to win. Yeah, yeah. But there was another snub that really surprised me, and that was Birdman for Best Editing. Yeah. That amazed me. I I was, holy crap. (laughs) It's a movie where the editing is noticeably good. <laughs> I mean, when can you say that? Editing is only really noticeable when it's bad, but mm. this was just... It's, it's... I, I was in the theater wondering how they put it together, and I've mm. never done that with a movie before. And it was funny, I think one guy put out, you know, you can play a game, where's the edit? Yeah. And I'm just... I'm, I'm kind of pissed. Yeah. Like, I'm this close, I'm not watching the Oscars, but I'm still going to watch it. Everything is Awesome was nominated, so I was really, really happy. I was yeah. trying to come with the Lego joke there. I'm really <laughs> hoping that they're, uh, I hope it'll win just because I want Andy Samberg to have an Oscar. <laughs> I like that when we were, like, the first top night, like, a bunch of us went to go do movie reviews. Brian and I got out of our movie, and you and Chad were just waiting for us. You guys were just like, hey guys, guess what? What? Everything, Everything is, is Awesome! awesome. I mean, before I even saw the movie, I knew that song. So it's, <laughs> and that song was like a like a very important p- part of the movie's plot too. Mm-hmm. So that's that's gotta win. Mm. Apart from box trolls, no, there's there are like two that I'd never even heard of. It yeah, was like the, princess something. Yeah, the princess movie from uh, 
Studio Ghibli. Okay. And um, I think this. I forgot the other one. See something. They might give it to Ghibli because they're gonna have. I mean. It's um, either gonna be him or it's going to be. Um, I'd like it to be Box Trolls. I think it might be Box Trolls. Even though I don't yeah. think I think Box Trolls is the weakest of the movies that that studio's made. Mm-hmm. I still enjoyed it, and I want that yeah. studio to get some recognition. Yeah, it really needs it. Yeah, and I think that's the main reason why I think it's gonna take it because of the studio. But like you said, you know, we have how Miyazaki getting the Lifetime yeah, Achievement Award. Yeah, he's gonna or... be there. So yeah, you got Miyazaki there, and you got a Chibli film up. The Song of the Sea. Song of the Sea. I yeah, I, I, I never yeah, heard I've never. that. Same here. It's probably like Russian or something. It is a Ireland film, Belgium hmm. and France, and Luxembourg. Huh. Huh. Is Luxembourg that country you can rent rent for like seventy thousand? Yeah, it's day. tiny. Yeah, people use it as a tax dodge. But you know that's you know that's the Oscars. Um, pretty much what we're gonna do between now and when the Oscars start is we're gonna be talking about each of the films. Okay. And each night, or each it, well, episode, we're going to talk about a different one besides Birdman and Grand Budapest Hotel, because we've been talking about yeah, that. Yeah, we talked about those a lot. Since the beginning. Those movies. <laughs> oh. But um, tonight we saw Imitation Game. Yep. Yes. And interesting? Yeah, the way I put it is it's a C-plus movie with an A-plus performance. Yeah, for me, it was it was it's one of those movies where I'll be like, this is gonna this is one of those like boring like fancy movies that gets mm-hmm. all the Oscar nods, and it is getting a lot of Oscar nominations, and so it to me it's it watching it is what I expected the King's Speech to be, mm-hmm. just like a a not super interesting World War Two movie. That's like a bio, not well, not necessarily a biopic, but like a look at a specific thing about World War Two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they took some pretty serious liberties with Turing's life. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know I'm too much about his after life. After seeing so. this, I was really surprised this was nominated for Best Picture. Oh, it doesn't deserve yeah. to be nominated and for Best Picture. I mean, you you said it, and I agree with you. It's there's a lot of cliches. Yeah, you got the overbearing boss. You have. Um, the guys who are like, oh, I hate you. Yeah. Oh, but now, now, like now we're if you, you gave if me you an get... apple and por- told a joke poorly. Now I like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've got a hot girlfriend, so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna stick up for you and say that I'll quit if you get fired. Admit it. You'd do that too if you knew someone that was dating Kira Knightley. I'm not as into her as most people are. Really. I mean, I liked her as Elizabeth Swan, and I think she is beautiful. But I wouldn't be like, oh, I gotta, I want to tap that. I don't I do. know if I would actually. Tap. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you can use tap that for woman on woman, but I don't know, whatever. Let's try one. <laughs> okay, let's. Yeah, let's, let's not talk let's, about sex. That's not. That's not what the imitation game is about. <laughs> well, kind of. Well, kind of. It's towards the end. Well, to, well, it, they do have the three different timelines, and in one timeline, the whole thing is like, hey, did I'm pretty sure Alan Turing banged a dude, so we yeah. should probably arrest him for that. Which, that's something I want to talk about right away. Is it okay if I kind of... Yeah, go right ahead. Okay, I don't know if it's being part of the LGBTQIA community that makes me really excited for this kind of material, or if it's just something I'm just into and I'm glad to see representation in. But they about halfway through the movie, they're like, yeah, Alan Turing's gay. In the 50s timeline... It, we're pretty sure he banged a dude, so we have to arrest him for indecency because it was that was the procedure at this time. And then when they go back to main storyline, World War II timeline, like what he gets engaged to Kira Knightley, and he kind of he talks to one of his teammates about how he's actually gay, and they he, the guy turns into like you have to keep this a secret because one she's not going to be happy when she finds out. Two, they'll throw you in jail. But she takes it pretty well. Yeah, he does tell her, and she's like, so? Yeah, she's like, she's, well, we really like each other, and we understand each other better than most people will, so So? you're not going to be a perfect husband, but 
but I'm, whatever. I'm not gonna be probably the can't find someone better, so why not? Yeah. yeah. I would have liked if she would have been like, and if you want to go out and you want to have sex with men, just don't get caught because I'm gonna miss you. But I won't. But if you do that and don't mind that, I'm probably gonna do that. Then we'll have some kind of understanding. I, but I really wish that she would have. <laughs> she would have just thought like. Okay, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> I, I was hoping for that. I was hoping <laughs> for that, that too. Actually, kind of reminded me of is the scene from uh, Ed Wood, where he's when he starts dating Patricia Arquette, mm -hmm. and he just early in the movie his first girlfriend finds out he's a transvestite and she leaves him, and he's on like a carnival ride with her, and he just turns to her and says, "I'm a transvestite," and she's like. Does that mean you don't want to sleep with girls? He's like, no, I love sleeping with girls. It just wearing their clothes makes you feel closer to them. She's like, oh, okay, and then that's like it. Wait, that would be my reaction if you were like Megan. I gotta be honest with you, I like to wear dresses sometimes. So I'd be like, you okay. tried to get me to wear dresses. I have tried to get you, so I'd probably actually be like hot. But uh, but what I like about this movie and with talking about Alan Turing's sexuality. Is this probably the first time I've seen a movie where they had a gay main character and it was important and they talked about it, but it didn't take away from the plot. They still focused on his encryption skills and how and his mathematic skills and building his machine. And it didn't take away like and they could still talk about he's homosexual, this is gonna be a problem for him, this is going on. It it didn't take away from the movie. I really wish that he would be a spy at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, like, he really was working and yeah. secretly sending messages to... Because uh, like, they were saying yeah, like, a bunch of times, gummies. like, yeah, if you were the spy, we probably couldn't even have figured it out. <laughs> and just at the end, it's, at the end, he just opens like a little cupboard, and there's like a picture of Hitler. and he just <laughs> either, either that or MI6 is like, yeah, come work with us. End of discussion. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I kind of felt like they shot this movie without knowing how they were going to put it together. I, I know yeah. it's a lot with the lighting, but I mean, at the same time, because there was that one scene where the MI6 agent... Yeah, it's like half in shadow, half in light, and but, it's like, that's so obvious. I mean, it's obvious, but it could have been, you know, you Just can bad interpret... lighting. <laughs> you can actually interpret that to be okay because he's mi6 yeah so you know he has that you know he's working with him but he's really a secret you yeah, know so you can look at it as an artsy thing yeah, yeah it's i don't know I that's guess... what i assumed when you pointed it out i was like is that an artsy like dark side versus light side yeah he's half in the shadows half in the light mm -hmm. i don't think so but i could i could view I it i think as... it was because I, I i think the director here was a little I don't know, straightforward with a lot of his choices. But what, I, what I'm talking about is there's a scene where he's, where he's in the, what I guess is supposed to be modern timeline of mm -hmm. that movie, the stuff with the cop and him getting arrested. So there's a scene where he starts and talks about, the, probably the thing most people know Turing for is the, is the Turing test. Mm -hmm. And he kind of describes the Turing test, and then he says, like, do you want to play? And then starts telling him the story of what he did during the war. Mm -hmm. And that's in the middle of the movie. Yeah. That scene really felt like that should have been, like, the first scene. Mm -hmm. Like, it should have been everything leading up to that point. That scene. Then all the flashback stuff. All the stuff of World War II occasionally flashing back to his younger self mm -hmm. in school. Then the rest of the real world stuff. Mm-hmm. Or the present time stuff. That's how it felt like they... That's how it felt like it was shot to be. But then for some reason they just kind of I, mixed everything together. I think the like they mixed that kind of stuff up is because they didn't want to do the gay angle until like halfway through the movie. Cause I, could, it, what, I could see that. Yeah, I want... Because then that would become a focus, and they wanted to be like, this is Alan Turing, we want to introduce you to his I intelligence, how he got into the stuff... By the way, likes to bang dudes. But I mean, you could have had him. You could have had him being questioned without it being, That's without true. revealing why he well, was being that, questioned. Well, the start of that scene, he's like said something about like, yeah. So I, mean, I coerced. You think I coerced a young man to touch my penis? I don't know. I can understand what was. you're saying, and I can. That's probably why they made that decision. It just, in terms of structure, it 
to me it makes more sense to put that I'm going to start telling the story now part at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And I mean, and it doesn't help. There were moments where we didn't know where we were. Yeah. Jumping yeah. back and forth. There are three timelines in this. There's him at school as a young boy, him during World War II, and him in the present time sometime in the 60s. Mm-hmm. 50s. Uh, 50s? Yeah. Yep. Okay, 50s. Uh, sometime in the 50s uh, being questioned by the police. And they would jump back and forth without really putting in any kind of time slate. Or... Occasionally there'd be like a tiny time stamp, but it'd be yeah. in white on a the light time... background. The time stamps were really only in the World War II period, which to me backs up my they, idea. They sometimes happened like when they'd flash to him as a yeah. kid and then him and then... Oh, okay. The I only noticed timeline. him during the World War II period. Uh, yeah, sometimes the backgrounds were very light and the text would always be white. Maybe that's why. But... Yeah, it would, like, cut to... There were a few times when it cut to him being questioned, and I didn't realize till five or ten seconds into the scene that this wasn't happening in World War II. Yeah. You know. I mean, obviously, with the him at school stuff, it was easier to tell. Yeah, but even then, it was like... For a little while, it was like, okay, they're showing me a kid. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it could have been just a kid in World War II. Yeah. Ready to go under the ground. Yeah. Where Brian thought he saw the fourth doctor, but it was <laughs> yeah. an old woman. There's an old woman dressed exactly like Tom Baker with a big, <laughs> colorful scarf. It doesn't even look like the scarf. It was yellow and green. It, it Doctor... had, like, hints of, like, blue in it. Dr. Scarf had blue. No, it didn't. No, it still. didn't. It was, like, shades of brown and yellow, and, like, it was, like, muddy colors. And you were like, oh, that's totally the fourth doctor. And we're like, Brian, that's not even close. <laughs> you silly Whovian of a man. We we all we all want to have the doctor in World War Two, which he was. You know, the doctor was in, I know. in London Why during the Blitz. And... The doctors and the other Churchill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the dialects. And he had to take care of the zombie kid. Yeah, he was. That, that would have been <laughs> kind of an me? interesting thing to put in the uh, victory of the Daleks. Is just him kind of looking out on London, being like, "Huh, I wonder if I've done the thing with the zombie kid yet." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, I think I was just going to say that his scarf was knitted by Nostradamus' wife. <laughs> Do you feel like there was, I mean, obviously we we all agree that this movie shouldn't have been nominated. No. Um, but what movie would you replace it with? Um. The Lego movie? <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> if I could just stick a movie in there and didn't have to get it through the like process. Yes. Any movie uh, you want. Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Brian. Actually... How amazing would it be if they <laughs> no. were, if it was the Oscars and they're doing like the five minute segment on each of the best picture movie <laughs> and just in the middle of that was that fucking awful Ninja Turtles movie. I would go on a hunger strike. Oh, that would be amazing. Okay, an actual good movie. I would murder movie. Michael Bay. <laughs> an actual good movie. Good movie. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm trying to remember Have all America. the things I've seen this year. Uh, Winter Soldier. Bucky, no. I actually kind of feel like that's almost good enough to be nominated. Yeah, it, and it had World War II stuff and, like, commie stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's replace this World War II stuff with more interesting World War II stuff. My, my thing about it, though, was it wasn't a... It didn't feel like a superhero movie. It felt it like did. a spy movie. It did. And that's what I liked about it. What were you going to say, yeah, Brian? it wasn't a normal superhero I movie. I think... It was just a good movie. I've only, I haven't seen yeah. the full movie yet. I've seen scenes and bits and pieces, but the bits and pieces I've seen all look just absolutely amazing. Uh, Inherent Vice. Okay. Actually, my sister is watching that right now. <laughs> yeah. Just, I, like oh, I said, I've seen bits and pieces. I've read reviews. Seen I've lot. seen interviews. And just based on everything, it looks awesome. You? What else did I like this year? Not superhero related, and it has to be good. I, I'm trying to think of good movies, and then I'm like, good movie, good movie. <laughs> Transformers 4, that's the opposite of a good movie. Good movie. Pompeii, screw that movie. Screw it in the ass. Oh, Oculus. Oculus? Really? I think the last... It would have been interesting. It was a low-budget 
thriller that like really got all up in your head. Okay, I think the last horror movie. Like I couldn't, I couldn't go in my, I couldn't go into my room for like three days because I have a mirror next to my door. <laughs> I don't know if you classify it as a horror movie. I might. Sounds of the Lambs. I think it's the last one to be best picture. Yeah. Yeah, it was a horror movie. Why wouldn't Sorry. you call it a horror movie? I don't know, I call it a thriller or a crime movie. Or... It was a thriller, but it was a horror thriller. Scary shit happened. There was a murderer. Yeah, but there was a murderer in... Anthony Hopkins ate a dude. There was a murderer in Probably. Seven, but I wouldn't call Seven a horror movie. I'd call it a horror movie. Mm. It was scary. For, when you said Seven, I was thinking of the documentary. Sum it up. <laughs> yes, yeah, seven up. I'm just imagining all those little kids killing people now. <laughs> <around. laughs> oh. No, but the, the scene when they find the sloth guy in seven, <laughs> that's not scary to you? Not scary, but it's what still... What if Paltrow's head in a box? It's still, <laughs> by its nature, a crime movie or a... It know. is, by nature, a crime thriller, but it's still scary. Yeah. But, but I don't, it, I don't, and it gave me... I don't classify a horror movie as just a movie that is scary. I think it's got to be scary on a certain level to be a horror movie. For me, it's got to be scaring you is the central motivation of the movie, and every scene is about scaring you. Or every every decision in the movie is about scaring you. Hmm, that's a good point. Because, I, I mean, don't... if it's just about, like, legitimately scary, the scariest movie I saw this year was Transformers 4. <laughs> I was just sitting there like, this is going to make so much money. What does that say about us? Ninja Turtles, too. Because I remember even just talking to our like our friend Al. is like, oh, the Ninja Turtles movie is going to suck. And he's like, it's not going to be as bad as other Ninja Turtles stuff. And I'm like, Al, it's still going to be bad. He's like, but there are worse things. I'm like, Al, no, this is horrible. But uh, there, there, I think there's two movies that I... No, I wouldn't say Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, even though I really love it. I couldn't say it, but maybe Interstellar. I haven't I've, seen it. I've not seen Interstellar, and I was pumped to see it, but I just never got around to seeing it. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's definitely going to take home the special effects, because it combines traditional special effects and um, more modern stuff. All right. So. I want to see more practical special effects. Things. You know what? Oh, I yeah. haven't seen it yet, but Big Eyes... Just because Tim that, Burton needs a fucking Oscar. That comes out this, this year. This year. No, it came out December 25th. Really? Yeah. It came okay. out on Christmas, as did Into the Woods. And then I pointed out to people, like, Johnny Depp and Tim Burton both have a movie coming out on Christmas, and it's not the same movie. She is right. It came out on hmm. um, December 15th, actually. Oh. Hmm. Talking about Into the Woods. Oh. Meryl Streep. Another nomination. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel bad for every other actress when Meryl Streep gets nominated. It's like, oh, I did such a good job. I bet I'm going to get an Oscar. I'm nominated. Meryl fucking Streep. I don't think she's going to win, though. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I have think to it's see be, it before uh, what's I her, judge. What's the name? It's There's a one where a woman, where someone plays a woman with, uh, like, early onset Alzheimer's. Julianne Moore? Yeah, I think Julianne Moore. Mm-hmm. And it's like any of those things is like just Oscar bait. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's like playing a mentally challenged person. But you remember, you can't go full retard. Nope. See, Kara Knightley in Imitation Game. Uh, Meryl Streep. She did a good She's job. Right. Uh, Emma Stone. I didn't know that was her. Emma Stone and Burton? No, um, Kara Knightley. Oh. So I think that's pretty good. Yeah, when you don't recognize an actor as the actor, that's when you know like, they're good. All this thing is like, that girl's hot. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why uh, Gary Oldman is like my favorite actor, because every time I see a movie, it like takes me a while to be like, oh, Gary Oldman. Weirdly but I think most me, of that has to do with makeup. Weirdly for me, I will very often mix up Kieran Knightley and Natalie Portman. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Emma Stone was really good. Yeah. What was she in? Birdman. 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 Oh. Then she plays Star. Ar- Arnett. Arquette. Arquette. Thank you. Boyhood. Boyhood. Yep. Do you do you think there was any big surprises or snubs or? I was surprised by I picked Lego Movie to take it, mm-hmm. so I'm surprised by that. Uh. I don't know. I'm kind of surprised Imitation Game is up for Best Picture. Yeah, especially after seeing it. Yeah. Uh. I don't know. 
I was kind of surprised, even though I don't disagree with it, I'm just surprised mm-hmm. it's there. I was surprised by Grand Budapest Hotel for Best Picture. Mm-hmm. I, I'm more surprised due to the release date of the movie. Yeah. It's January movies are just forgotten completely for awards came, and stuff. Let's see, let's see. It came out in... Came out in March. March, really? Yeah. I thought it was still snow. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah I could have cool. I could have sworn we saw a Grand Budapest Hotel in January. <coughs> we live in Michigan, and there's snow no matter what. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I, I could have sworn it was earlier in the year. Though. I, I, I love... Is the March release date the general release date or mm. the limited release date? March. It's limited. Limited. Yep. Huh. Hmm. I'm surprised by that. That's still well. It's still really early. Mm. So I, I like the fact that two comedies have the top. Are both going for it, and has the most nominations. Mm-hmm. So was... Who's uh? I didn't. Get, I don't think I. Well, I read the full list, but I can't think of the full list of best actor nominees. Uh, I'm right in front of me because yeah, I don't remember either. I know Keaton and Cumberbatch. Yep. The guy who played. As long as one of they, as long as one of them wins, I'll be happy. The guy who played. Uh, Stephen Hawking. Hawking. Uh, Bradley Cooper and Steve Carell. Okay. Which I, I don't see Steve Crow. No. Bradley but Cooper in what it's movie? Kind of impressive that he's uh, American nominated. Sniper. Okay. So I, my really... first thought was Guardians of the Galaxy. He... Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's supporting actor. He's nominated oh, for supporting actor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I don't think I think Sniper is going to be nominated for a bunch of stuff, but I don't think he's going to win. Do you, Do you think that Michael Keaton's going to take it? Yeah, I think it's him. And, well, because my thing is that there are two big biopic nominations, you know? Mm-hmm. So s- split the vote for the biopic thing two ways, and, you know, who else is left, you know? Mm-hmm. I, like I said, I don't think Sniper's going to get anything. I don't think, I think people, I haven't seen his performance in Foxcatcher, but I think people will avoid voting for Steve Carell just because... He's Steve Carell. Yeah, they associate yeah. him with The Office and Get mm-hmm. Smart. And this other silly movies just that he's yeah. done. He was nominated just for uh, Little Miss Sunshine, though, wasn't he, for Best Supporting? Yeah, he was. I believe so. Pretty so. sure. He was good in that. Yeah. I love that movie. That movie I love amazing. that movie so much. <laughs> Actually, no. Really? What? Yeah. Huh. But he was nominated for a lot. He was nominated for the Screen Actors Guild. Okay. Okay, um, so he did get, like... So this is his first nomination? Yep. Cool. Nice. Uh, for him, I'd, I'd like Benedict Cumberbatch to win just because I remember like a year or more ago just the two of us talking about movies that he was going to be in like American made movies and you were like and it was all like villain roles and you're like oh, I really hope he doesn't just get like pegged as this villain because that's what the well, America he's... likes to do with actor with British right. actors. Well he's got Doctor Strange now so yeah. Well, yeah. that's not going to happen. But I mean if he won like this people would be like oh he's a good dramatic serious actor let's Put him in stuff where he's not a villain. He's actually pretty well known for Sherlock. Sherlock's pretty yeah. big in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, PPS. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen Moffat. <laughs> I know a lot of people, it's, it's fashionable to be down on Moffat, but I <laughs> love Moffat. I, I don't get why people... I guess I, I understand why people hate him. But at the same time, without him, there would be no Doctor Who. Yeah, without him, Doctor Who would have just disappeared. It, it, no more Matt Smith. He wrote the only really good story with Christopher Eccleston, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And it, it just it makes me so mad when people just bash him. Like, yes, I get I it. Think I it's think it's that he... My thing is that people people's big complaint is that he writes stories that make you cry. Mm-hmm. But he make, writes stories that make you cry because he makes characters that you care about. So when he kills those characters or puts them in peril or puts them through some big trial, it has an impact on Yeah, you. But yeah. I mean, I think the other reason why I think they, they agree, but then all of a sudden someone writes them and they bring them back. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's why a lot of people don't like them. But I feel time. like a lot of Doctor Who fans' complaints is that just basically boiled down to he's not Russell T. Davies. Yeah. Like, those are the stories they like. Those are the stories that aren't being written anymore. Mm-hmm. 
And which I'm I all know, for uh, putting in a couple, putting in a couple like big campy, goofy episodes a year. Uh, what's mm-hmm. her What's her name? Uh, girl we know goes to a Renaissance festival from Otaku, blonde, heavier, but she's been losing weight. Oh, the one that <sighs> the tattoo artist. Not the tattoo artist, but she's got lots of tattoos. I think her license plate says TARDIS. Oh, why can't I remember her name? I have no idea. Oh, it's going to come to me later, and I'm going to have to message... I'm going to have to, like, text you and be like, I remembered her name, put it in, like, the YouTube, like, description section that we remembered her name. But her big complaint about, like, Moffat and, like, mostly about Clara is where, like, he... Like, since Moffat's been in charge... It's been a lot, there's been a lot of emphasis about uh, the companions. And it's Doctor Who, not the companion show. And that was like her big issue with Moffat. I felt like they did more character development for the 11th Doctor than they did for 10 or uh, 9. Well, oh, definitely more well, than 9. Well, 11 stayed on the longest. Uh, 10, it was there for three seasons. Yeah, okay. Three seasons and then like another, basically another season that was all movies. So it's not efficient. So he basically did four years. Yeah. But the, the, they haven't done a lot of that with uh, Capaldi, but the the story this season wasn't that. It's it's hard to describe if you haven't seen it, but i got to make you watch it. Yeah. Okay. So do you think Cumberbatch, you think Cumberbatch should take it? I think he should. But if Keaton got it instead, that would still make me happy because he is my favorite Batman. I really like He's him. Beetlejuice. <laughs> He holds a special place in my heart. He's a Shakespearean actor. Shakespearean actor. Worked <laughs> with Tim Burton a lot. I really liked Cumberbatch. I would be perfectly happy if he won. I think it should go to Keaton. Mm-hmm. I, I think Keaton, in my opinion, is more... He's not based on anything, so he had to create this whole character himself. Yeah. And I think with Cumberbatch, you know, you have some sort of idea, but it's based off of... So you can work with that. I think Birdman, you know, you have to deal with the fact that he's suicidal. You have to deal with the fact that he's depressed and... Apparently, like, has hallucinations. Su- and... Yeah, superpowers. Yeah. Talking these superpowers. But uh, that's all we're really going to talk about. I know we got off topic there with Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, Doctor Sorry. Who should win an Oscar. Yes. I'd like But, <laughs> but um, it's going to be for the movie with the Eighth Doctor. Well, the there, I forget what studio it is. Some studio has the Amer- has the rights to make a film. I think American it's Warner Brothers. Warner I Brothers. Brothers. I think it's Warner Brothers. I'm I'm, I want them to go ahead with it, but I also don't. For me, if they have Moffat write it, I'm fine with whatever mm-hmm. they do. Uh, but if, if Strax is by, in it, I'm good. What if it was written by Nolan? No. I I would be cool with Nolan and Moffat. <laughs> Because, I mean, Nolan does can do, like, really head-trippy and really, you know... I would be... Nolan would be great for a director for me. Mm-hmm. I would be happy with Nolan as a director. But as for writer, I don't think anyone... I think Moffat's the best Doctor Who writer since uh, Douglas Adams. Mm-hmm. So... Okay. Um, Douglas or Adams is a big or I would kind of... I would also be happy if they did... Uh, if they gave it to Neil Gaiman. Oh, yeah. Neil Gaiman. And they've said they're not going to cast any actor who's played the Doctor in the TV show to play the Doctor in this. Oh. But is Strax, gonna, is Strax on the table? Is that a, is he fair game? Probably not. The, the, <sighs> the suggestion I heard that would make, make me the most excited is cast Benedict Cumberbatch as a young version of William Hartnell's first Doctor. Oh, and yeah. have, it be, have the movie start with him stealing the TARDIS. And then it's like his first encounter with the Daleks. His first encounter with the Cybermen. You know. But didn't he? Didn't didn't the first Doctor steal the TARDIS? Yeah. As yeah. as his old age. That because is something you they could, showed. Yeah. In an episode. They, they did show that in an episode. They showed yeah. that in an episode. I don't know. You could you could fudge that. You know? <laughs> it's yeah. time travel. I want it to kind of fit in with the time. I don't want it to be constrained by the timeline of the show. I want it to kind of fit. I don't want it to be like the movies with uh, in the Peter 60s. Peter Cushing. Yeah. Where it was the cyber people or whatever the hell they called them. No, they called them Daleks. No, they, this, they had the Cybermen in one of the movies. Oh, yeah, that's right. And they right. called them like the cyber people or something. Oh, that's right, that's right. I just like the fact that the Doctor is named who. <laughs> 
But and isn't he a human in the movies? I think so. Yeah, he's just a human who built a time machine. It's like, oh. Uh, uh. And I like how the fact that at one point they actually try to put it in continuity. Oh. He was um, on one of your t-shirts. Yeah. But I... Yeah, one out. last thing, because I know I kept saying we got off topic. Yeah. But three of the best directors... Um, we saw all three of the movies so far. We saw Wes Anderson with the Grand Budapest Hotel, um, Birdman, and Imitation Game. Really? Um, Imitation Game is up for direction? Yeah. Man. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Cumberbatch has carried that movie a long way. You're like, this is really good. Yeah, because of Cumberbatch. Give it all the awards. <laughs> they don't all go to Cumberbatch, though. All the awards. No, that's... <laughs> I think that's gonna go to Boyhood too. I'd give it to. Uh, I don't know. I really think it's down to three movies. I mean, I understand Boyhood is this, like important movie, but I think people really like Birdman, and I really think people want to give Wes Anderson an Oscar. Yeah. I don't. So I, I feel. I, feel like... I have yet to see Boyhood, so I need to yeah. see it to yeah. have a, any opinion on how good the direction is. So. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying for, like, the audacity of the production, I think it's going to be Boyhood, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, and I agree, I mean, that's... Get the that's... feeling Boyhood is going to be this year's Gravity, where mm-hmm. at one point we just decide, take a shot every time gra- it wins an award. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, that's our Oscars. We apologize for going way off topic there. Yeah. yeah. At the beginning and at the end. Yeah. But... You know, that's what makes, I think, podcasts awesome. That, you yeah. know, you can... Yeah. Just talk about whatever we want. Yeah, whatever whatever comes we... up. Yeah, I mean... Oh, I do have a... Next week, um, <laughs> we'll be taking a look at Boyhood. Oh, okay. Um, Boyhood. Because it is a movie that we have not seen. That we yeah, really and, should. And we He's really gonna should. win everything. Although I did... I had an interesting conversation with someone about Boyhood where they said, like, do you think it's going to be iconic-like... Kane or like Casablanca or Jaws or you know that kind of thing Mm -hmm. and I had to say no because it's a picture of growing up today and growing up today is different than it was 50 years ago and it's different than that was different than it was 50 years before Mm -hmm. that 50 years from now a kid's gonna watch that movie or you know someone's gonna watch that movie and they're not gonna have the same connection they're not gonna feel like this I might, I might have to say different on you. It depends on what they talk about in the movie. Yeah. Because. Yeah, we should probably have this conversation after we see yeah, it. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like. We could speculate, but we can't really provide I, any. I'm answer. not. Yeah. You know, if it's like, oh, I got a cell phone for Christmas, and you have this whole thing where he has a cell phone for Christmas. And yeah. People, Fifty years from now, people are going to be, be like, I was born with my cell phone. You know, but if it's really about the kid dealing with his parents... And, then, like, kid dealing with... Well, I guess what I'm saying feeling, is that if they made the same movie and... in the 50s and we watched it now, would we feel a connection to it? Mm-hmm. You know, if they made the movie at the turn of the century and we watched it now, would we have the same connection to it? Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and, and like I said, it's going to be what issues yeah. they tackle. And... Is that... Ethan Hawke is in that, right? Yes. Is he nominated for anything? I don't think so. Nope. Okay. Wow, this movie well, actually, really yeah, did take 20 years to make. Supporting? Supporting. Okay. I was looking at their best. But yeah, he was... I kind of expected the kid to be nominated for Best Actor. I was thinking that too. But, you know, we have Birdman and yeah. Cumberbatch. No, Keaton. Um, <laughs> I would bet money on Keaton. That, that's where my money is, too. Because the Oscars, like you said, likes to... I like to, it's, it, in the same way you knew, uh, and I, I don't think I'm ever going to remember his name, the guy from The uh, Artist was going to win because it was a movie about making movies. Mm-hmm. You know that Keaton's going to win because it's a movie about creativity and the yeah. identity is a movie star. Mm-hmm. It's a, he plays a movie star, so people are going to be like, ha-ha, this movie's about me. Yeah, it's just George Clooney's going to be at home and be like, this speaks to me. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just picturing George Clooney just watching it, just all seriousness, like his hands, like not to- his fingers not totally interlaced, but with the index and thumb out. Doing a Gendo in- Ikari. Yeah. 
I'm going to there. make art. <laughs> yes, I, I, I understand where he's coming from. And halfway with his come acting. back to Broadway. Oh. Ooh, cool. What's she gonna be in? Uh, she hasn't said, but she is coming back. Oh, she's she's um she her the whiz. <laughs> <laughs> you know who else is coming to Broadway? And I'm like, I don't know if I want to see this or not. Who? Snooky. Um. In what? Cinderella. She still exists. Cinderella. She didn't oh. like evaporate when we stopped caring. Would have been amazing if it was like death of the salesman <laughs> <laughs> or waiting for Godot. <laughs> see, here's the thing: waiting for Godot, I wouldn't go see. I would go see if it was death of the salesman. Or she plays uh, Desdemona. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I would go see it. Oh, I, I would, would go love broke to see seeing that. I, I would love that. Front, front row, center seats. Just. What? With Chris Brown as Othello. <laughs> no, you gotta get the rest of the cast is like solid professional Shakespearean actors <laughs> and just. Snooky as Desdemona. <laughs> I love him because I like his stories. <laughs> oh. I'm just, I'm just imagining Shakespeare right now. Chris Tucker and Snooky. <laughs> <laughs> I would chop oh. off my leg if it meant I could go see Chris Tucker <laughs> as Othello. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, that, I think we should end Man, on, that. Right. Which we'll end on that. Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you next week with Boyhood. Woo! Yes. Woo.